in this video, we're going to talk about specialization and trade. So specialization and trade is a way to consume outside of the PPF, right? So let's say we've got our PPF here for an economy where we can produce food or bicycles. And we think about being limited with our current level of resources to all the points along that curve, right? We can't currently produce outside here. These points are not currently feasible given our current level of resources. But by specializing in producing a good in which your country or economy has a comparative advantage, right? If you have a comparative advantage in one good, you can specialize and produce only that good, for example, food, and then trade with another co uh, country to get the bicycles or something you don't have a comparative advantage in producing. And you can actually consume at a point beyond the PPF, right? So you're not, you're not expanding the PPF. So it's not like when we get new technology or capital accumulation, we're not expanding the PPF. Uh, what you're doing is you're, you're specializing in something where you have a comparative advantage, you're trading with another economy, and, and you're getting to consume at one of those points that isn't otherwise feasible. So I, I want to give you an example. So let's say that you are stranded on an island, you're stranded on a deserted island after a plane crash with only your economics professor. Exciting, I know. So you can collect two coconuts per hour, right? You have to climb trees or whatever. You get two coconuts an hour or, and or you can collect half a liter of water. Let's say there's a spring and you can go and collect some fresh water, right? So you, if for one hour's work, you could either collect two coconuts or uh, half a liter of water. Now your professor can also collect coconuts and water, but he or she can only collect one coconut per hour and also half a liter of water per hour. So you each can get half a liter of water per hour, but if you decide to use that hour to collect coconuts, you're gonna do a lot better job. You have an absolute advantage in producing coconuts. You can produce two coconuts an hour. Your professor can only produce one coconut an hour. So let's pretend that you each worked for eight hours, that you thought, you know what? We, we really need to be working eight hours. And so that's what we're gonna do. And you, after eight hours, Let's just say that you end up, you spend four hours collecting coconuts, right? So you get eight coconuts and then you spend the other four hours producing water. So four times half a liter of water per hour is two liters of water. And then your professor uh, also spends four hours doing coconuts and four hours doing water. So he ends up with four coconuts and two liters of water. This is just one combination of goods. It doesn't have to be this way, right? You could spend six hours doing coconuts and, and, and two hours getting water. But I'm just trying to give you an example of a combination of goods that you and your professor could produce, right? Now your production possibilities frontier would look like the following. And it's, it's actually going to be linear in this example. Usually a PPF, we, we see it having that familiar curve, right? Because resources are not generally equally productive in all uses. But let's just say here we've got this linear PPF, right? So for example, if you produced uh, zero liters of water, you could produce 16 coconuts, right? And if you produce zero coconuts, then you could produce four liters of water, et cetera. And so each red point along here, along the PPF is efficient in production, meaning that at any given point, let's say right here, which is the point we were talking about, we were talking about you produce eight coconuts, you collect two co eight, co eight coconuts and two liters of water, right? So we'll say that's, that's 0.82 right here. So that point is efficient in production. What does that mean? That means that you cannot, given your current level of resources, produce, for example, uh, let's say a point, let's say the point 10 to, let's say 10 coconuts, 10 coconuts and two liters of water. You can't currently produce that, right? This is not feasible. This is not feasible in their current level of resources. But let's think about the following. You might be, might be able to trade with your professor and, and actually get to that point 10 to, right? You might think that's crazy. How can I consume a, at a point beyond my PPF, those points aren't feasible. Well, that's where this idea of comparative advantage becomes important. So your opportunity cost, and I just abbreviated that OC here, so that's opportunity cost. Your opportunity cost of producing one coconut is 0.25 liters of water. So think about it, right? You produce, you collect two coconuts an hour, right? Two coconuts an hour, and so for you, Otherwise, you could spend an hour collecting half liter of water, right? So two coconuts, two coconuts, or 0.5 water, right? So if we divide this by two, we divide that by two, right? And then divide this by two, that gives us 0.25, right? Because we want to know 
the opportunity cost of producing one coconut for you, right? So it's 0.25 liters of water. So to produce one coconut, you give up a quarter liter of water that you could have collected, right, instead. Now, your opportunity cost of producing one liter of water is four coconuts. So let's think about it like this. For you to get one liter of water would take you two hours, right? Because you get half liter of water per hour. So it would take you two hours. And in two hours, you produce, you get two coconuts an hour. So you could get four coconuts. So the time that you could have spent collecting one liter of water could have been spent collecting four coconuts, right? That's the idea. So we can look at your opportunity cost. Producing a coconut is 0.25 liters of water and a producing a liter of water is four coconuts. Now we could do the same thing for your professor, right? Your professor's opportunity cost of producing one coconut because uh, he or she does one coconut an hour and half a liter of water an hour. So to produce one coconut, you're giving uh, the professor giving up half a liter of water, right? So 0.5 liters of water is the, the opportunity cost of uh, getting one coconut. And conversely, the opportunity cost of one liter of water is going to be two coconuts right because it takes your professor to get two hours to get one liter of water because they do half a liter of water per hour and to for them to get two uh, the, in two hours they could have collected two coconuts because they collect one coconut per hour so we look at these opportunity costs right we compare them and we see that for you you have you collect um the coconuts cost you less Right, coconuts cost you less. It's only a quarter liter of water for you to go get a coconut that you're giving up. Your professor is giving up half a liter of water, right? So you have a comparative advantage. You have a, a comparative advantage. I'll just put comp advantage. You have a comparative advantage in coconuts. In coconuts, right? You are. It costs you less to go get a coconut, right? Now. For your, your opportunity cost to get water is four coconuts. You're giving up because you're really good at producing coconuts, right? You're really good at climbing those trees. And so you give up uh, to get one liter of water, you're giving up four coconuts, whereas your professor is only giving up two coconuts to get one liter of water. So your, your professor has a comparative advantage in producing water and collecting water. And that might seem weird to you. You might think, hey, we both collect a half liter of water an hour. Why is it that my professor has a comparative advantage? Well, it doesn't matter. So if your professor collected more water per hour than you, then you say your professor has an absolute advantage, but it doesn't matter. What we care about is comparative advantage. And what we're noticing here is even though you both collect water at the same rate at 0.5 liters, uh, uh, um, or excuse me, at, at uh, 0.5 liters of water per hour, you both collect at that same amount, but you have a different opportunity cost of producing water because you are really good at producing coconuts. So you're giving up a lot more to produce the water. Okay, so that's the comparative advantage. Okay, now what we want is for each of you to specialize, specialize where you have a comparative advantage. And then you can trade, right? And each be better off. So for example, let's say you say, you know what, I'm gonna take my whole, so you, take eight hours and you just do coconuts you just do coconuts you would end up with 16 coconuts because you do two coconuts an hour right now your professor your professor if you just say look look just collect water i'll take care of the coconuts right so your professor spends eight hours and a half liter of water an hour so they'd end up with four liters of water now comes the trade right you need to trade and there, there are a number of trades you could do here but, but let me just give you the one that we were talking about. So we were talking about can you could you consume at the point ten two right where you have ten coconuts and your professor has or excuse me you have two, ten coconuts and two liters of water. So for that to happen, you could give six coconuts because you you want to have you want to have ten coconuts and two liters of water right. So you could give six of these ten or, or these coconuts. You give six coconuts to your professor. So you give six coconuts to your professor, and then your professor could give you two liters of water. Okay, so now at that point, let's look at you. So you have 10, co so you just gave away six of your 10, uh, 16 coconuts, right? So now you have 10 coconuts. You, uh, your professor, you had no water, but your professor gave you two liters of water. So now you have two liters of water, right? And if we think about your professor, your, your, so this is you, and the professor, now they're, uh, he or she is receiving six coconuts. 
and now here she had four liters of water but but gave you two so now has two liters of water so your professor is at six coconuts two liters of water you're at ten two the professor is at six two so let's go back remember ten two and six two so now this is where you're at ten two and six two right now it had seemed like this wasn't even possible, right? Because we already went through this and we said, hey, this is efficient in production, right? This 0.82 is on the PPF, right? So in a way, it's we were actually able to consume, you're able to consume at a point that was beyond the PPF, right? By specializing in trading, right? So you basically say, okay, look, I have a comparative advantage in producing coconuts. I'm, I'm do, I'll do a lot better job at it than the professor. So I'll just specialize in producing coconuts the professor has a not an absolute advantage, but a comparative comparative advantage in producing water. So they'll just produce water, and then we'll trade. And in each case, so now let's, let's assume again you worked eight hours and and so forth. You could have a situation where you have ten coconuts instead of eight, and two liters of water. You're you're no worse off. You have the same water, and your professor now gets six coconuts and, and two liters of water. So you're each better off by specializing in trading, and you're able to consume at a point beyond your production possibilities frontier.